have an idea in your mind of something you want and you deserve to get it. So how do you get there? Well, welcome to the Idea Space, a podcast devoted to helping you overcome frustration and make what you want a reality. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, high school teacher turned entrepreneur. Now I'm a business development coach. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, overwhelmed, or lost. Every week, I share topics, tools, and strategies to help you move toward that thing you want. Create time and energy to do the things you love, get clarity on what you really want and how to get there, and most importantly, stop feeling alone with your challenges. Whether you've wanted to create a better business, job, relationship, hobby, or self, I know there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it with confidence and clarity. Ready to have it? Let's go. Hi, everybody. I'm so glad you're here. Today, I'm interviewing Kelsey Banfield. Kelsey is a money mindset coach. She works specifically with female entrepreneurs. And I'm not going to say much about her because she's going to tell you why she does what she does and what the hell it means to even work on money mindset. Like, what is that? I can tell you myself, I didn't even know what that was until about three years ago. And I think Kelsey's going to help us get out of our own way to attract more money into our lives and show us what's in the way to get that done. So Kelsey, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Mm-hmm. My pleasure. <laughs> so I'm going to actually dive right in and ask you first, can you explain what a money mindset coach is and how did you become one? Sure. So I, a money mindset coach is, is what I do. And I focus on helping women manifest money in their lives. And what usually that means is, is so manifesting means to make real. Mm -hmm. And what it's funny to say about that term is making real money is actually comes down to removing what your, why your blocks that, you know, you're keeping you from bringing the money into your lives. The money is all there waiting for you. You have to go out and get it. A lot of people seem to think, you know, manifesting money means like finding new income sources and kind of taking all this radical, radical action, which it does in a way. But what usually comes down to, especially with the entrepreneurs I work with, is there's a, they are preventing the money from coming in. Which, I've done a little bit of work around this. I'm no expert like you are, but it sounds crazy. It's like, what do you oh. mean money is out there? What do you mean I need to attract it? No, 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 no. When I grew up, the harder you worked, the more money you got. Exactly. It sounds crazy, right? Exactly. So much of what we think about money and how we earn money and bring it into our lives is what we were taught as children. And that is, that is what is imprinted onto our primal brains between the ages of like zero and 14. Okay. And what we do then is we take what we've learned, our brains are just developing at that point and is imprinted in there and it kind of loops around in our subconscious. So if you saw a parent or a caregiver uh, fighting about money or worrying about money all the time, you as a child might think, Oh, money is something we worry about. Money is something we struggle with. Money makes rooms and situations tense. Or I get a lot. If you're an entrepreneur, that means you really don't make money until you sell your company. Oh my God, that's yeah. fascinating. Because you hear about these glorified, you know, and then you'll hear people say like, well, my friend's parents were entrepreneurs and they toiled away and it was so torturous. And then they sold their company and made a lot of money. You know, so, you know, it's like, okay, that's all fine. But when the money is there for the money is just, it's just a piece of paper. Yeah. It, it, you know, and we put the value on it, right? right? We, we just, you know, way back in the day we would barter with, you know, camels and whatever else it was. <laughs> right. But now we, you know, so money is energy. It's just another form of energy. And we, when we exchange it and when we pass circulate it around, the energy gets circulated around. So okay. you touched on this a little bit, mm-hmm. but I'm curious, like, where do we, you, you talked about where we get our money mindset from, which, which I think everybody can like understand that that's right. logical. What, what's underneath that? Like, okay, how do you so, make it clear for people who feel like, what? I, okay. So, so let me get back into the subconscious. So this is all imprinted on us when we were growing up. Okay. And it's imprinted not only from our parents, but from society. You know, what we see in the media, who gets rewarded with money for what? We see wealthy people on TV. We see lifestyles of the rich and famous on television. You know, did you learn that rich being rich creates more money, more problems? Did you learn that rich people are oh, yeah. gross? There are all these things that 
we kind of in, interpret with our primal brain. We're not logically writing this down and thinking of it because what I do with my clients is once you start to look at these imprints and undo them, you realize that where you are projecting from as an adult, your attitude about money is something that you picked up as a child and you didn't pick it up quite accurately. You know, people might say, oh, well, my parents always used to say, we're the, ha we're the have nots. There's the have and the have nots. That's something I've heard a lot, right? So as a child, you think, oh, well, I will always be a have not. Now, you don't actually logically think that when you're riding your bike to school. Right? Like, you <laughs> right, know, right. There's no second grader that's sitting there thinking, oh, well, that makes sense. And then we will always be a have not. Right. You what happens is that you kind of store it away. And then everything that occurs as you grow up, you kind of shape with these beliefs in mind. And so, you know, it is so, and what we manifest, we manifest from our subconscious. So it's like our brains are taking in everything and we don't even know it. Right. We are just, we're sponges. We're just soaking up all the information. So whether we know we're thinking this or not, we're, we have these thoughts about money. Right. Exactly. And that's where you can find a lot of self-sabotaging behaviors too, as adults. So, so when you project your money attitude toward money from what you've learned when you were little, you don't realize it, but it's all coming out of your subconscious. Okay. So, and this is where the work begins. It's kind of getting down in there because your neurons are so well programmed by this point that, totally. that, you know, it's like muscle memory. Totally. You know, and that's when you hear things. You, I hear stories all the time. Like, well, I made my first $5,000 and then I spent it on this and this and this. So they just get it out the door as quickly as possible. Oh, you know, like, yeah. you know, I'm like, no, no, no. It's safe for you to have money. Well, I mean, it should always be invested or we really needed this and this and this because there's still some issue of feelings, some deep feelings around is, is it safe to have money? Or, because right. then I become the rich, gross person. That's right. Or I become I don't the have. To have it. Right. right. Like I become the have and we, we were always the have nots. That's right. what my parents always said. We were the have nots. My so parents the, too. Yeah. So like you hear this. So, and man, what we manifest, we manifest in this world from our subconscious beliefs. Okay. I think really is also a measure of self worth. Totally. So, totally. I see that. I see how this all works together. I'm sure yes. people listening see how it all works together. So here's my big question then. Mm -hmm. it, are we basically doomed to repeat what's been <laughs> imprinted on us? Is there a way to control all of this that's been kind of absolutely absorbed into ourselves? The mindset comes from, and it's not just your mindset, like, you know, Tweedledee Dee, I'm going to just make a lot of money today. <laughs> no matter what, you have to really get down in there with meditation work, with some journaling work to undo these imprints. And what I do is I just start posing questions. And almost 99% of the time with my clients, they start saying, I never thought of that. Like, I never realized, you know, my parents always taught me we would go to the cheapest, you know, when I needed, say, a dress to wear to an event, we would go to a clothing store and look for a deal on the sale rack. Totally. And, and that's how I shop. Mm -hmm. Everything I have to get, you know, a discount, a deal, a deal, a deal. I'm like, well, what if you paid more for a dress you just love? What? What? That's crazy. You know, and then you, so there's this energy exchange, right? And then you put this dress in your closet that you love and you know what? You start trotting that dress out for all kinds of events because you spend so much money on it yeah. and you love it so much. And, and you feel good in it. Care of it. You take good care of it. Yeah. So there you have higher quality for more money, but you end up spending less in the long run because you're getting something more quality. Mm -hmm. so that's the spending money and the receiving money is another avenue, which is that a lot of people, especially entrepreneurial women, you know, there's a lot of toil and struggle and there's a lot of alone time whenever you're starting any kind of business that after a while you feel maybe like you're failing or you feel like this isn't going to work out. And then you get your first big paying client. And just, I hear people say all the time, like, well, it was kind of a fluke. Totally. Oh my and, God. So dead on. Yes. Yes. And they discount themselves. I'm like, no, that's the universe saying you've finally done it. You've got, <laughs> you know, you've held that faith, you know, keep the faith. You're, you're totally worthy of this. And that is that self-worth. You undo these subconscious beliefs which are limiting you and your capacity to receive and spend money. Mm. And you, and it is, I mean, there are tears, there's a lot of time, there's a lot of thought put into this. And then you start expanding your self-worth into being that have, into being that successful entrepreneur. You know, you have to expand your beliefs and you have to kind of see it to believe it. You have to do the work. You have to put yourself in the energy of other people who are doing the same work you are. That's such a great point because what I see, 
unless my clients, like, so my clients are entrepreneurial women who want to grow their business and they're kind of stuck in a, they're stuck in a loop right now. Like they, they, they're really good at something, but like they can't get to the next level. Like I know why they can't get to the next level. They don't have time. They don't have confidence. They don't have a strategy. But I know it's their thoughts that keep them stuck. Exactly. Like what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And it keeps them, it's, it's a self-worth thing that they have to be around those higher achieving people, those higher vibrational people, because they're usually often they have like a spouse who Mm -hmm. pulls them down or a a parent who's like kind of raising an eyebrow, like, who are you to do this? That's my, that's my story. Or, or friends who aren't in, who aren't doing that work. Yep. And, exactly. And if you're surrounded by those people, like you feel like you're a little crazy. Like you do. who am I to be doing this work? Nobody exactly. else is. What's why? Exactly. Like, what am I a lunatic? Right. Exa- absolutely. A hundred percent. And it's also really good to look around and find the people who have accomplished what you want to accomplish. Okay. So if you are starting a business that, you know, and you're looking to make money and you've gotten to a point, say you, you're a dress designer. I'm just sticking with the clothes metaphor yes. here, right? So, right, you, you design the dresses, but you have to, you know, get more money in or get more customers or this and that. You know what? It is worth your time for the money manifesting to do a little research and find that designer who has accomplished what you already want to do. Mm. And the mistake that we make with the money mindset is a lot of people will say, well, if she's done it or he's done it, then like, where's the room for me? Oh my God. I hear this all the time. No, no. They are there to show. They are there to show, you know, so you can look at these designers who have hit it big. And it's such a gift when these people have interviews in Vogue or wherever, and they talk about their struggles. They talk about the little store they started, you know, it's like, it was, I was watching an interview with Jennifer Lopez or something. And she was talking about, she goes, you know, Oh God, I just danced my heart. I kept dancing and dancing and dancing and dancing, you know? But the point is, is that they share these stories because they, they're, they're there for you to look for. Mm-hmm. And I love it when they do, because I always point my clients, I'm like, look, if you really want to be that superstar, it is there for you because people have done it before you and they will do it after you. That's right. And you're, and they're not the only one who can. Right. That's yes, important exactly. And the, and the money doesn't mean you have to be famous. It doesn't mean you have to be this or that. It can be anything you, know, you want to be. Let's talk about how many women are in the money mindset field. Like there's, mm-hmm. um, Jen Sincero wrote, you know, yep. how to, uh, you are a badass at making money. And then there's Denise Duffield Thomas. And there's tons and tons of woo woo people who I don't even like know all of their names. There's yes. a lot of people in your space. There are. I don't have access to them, but I have access to you. Right? <laughs> I don't like, have access to them either. But I have right? to say they're kind of around. I mean, I've, I've exchanged messages with Denise on Facebook. For, oh, that's awesome. I mean, yeah, they all exist. They're not here to like barricade themselves up in some castle like, oh, right. we are the money goddesses and you are just our right. money. Right. <laughs> so know? I love that you're like walking yeah. the walk and surrounding yourself with those people who are bringing you yes. up to a higher vibration. Yes. And then what I do, and then what, this is when the money mind. So I have something I do with my clients. I call it the money mindset gym. Oh. Set it up when they start because if you want to strengthen your body and you want to get your stronger arms, you do push ups every day. You don't right. do just one set of push ups and be like, Yes, <laughs> right. I'm oh, done now. Right. Here it is. On to bathing suit season. Here I come. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Look at those biceps for about 12 minutes, <laughs> right? You got it. It's consistency. Sure. Consistency. And then eventually, you get to the point where you look back a year later and you're like, Oh, I can nail like 10 push ups, no problem. You know, because you're just, you're just, the mindset's there. You've reprogrammed the neural pathways. That's the beauty of neuroplasticity, right? Yeah. It's the same with your mindset. It's the same with your money mindset. Okay. What I, so I always say is carve out 30 minutes a day, preferably in the morning Mm -hmm. and do a little mix of reading something inspirational, a little journaling and a meditation. And it can be any kind of, and sometimes it's like, dude, go dance, like get yourself pumped up, whatever it is that gets you pumped up to do something. But the money mindset. So I love like those books. Like I've read Denise, I have Denise, a well thumbed Denise's book and Jen's book and mm-hmm. Tasha Silver. Like there are lots oh, yes, of books, yes, yes. you know, and even good old Wallace Waddles and Napoleon Hill. Like, <laughs> yes, you know what? Dudes. Read them all. I know, but you know, like read, yes. the, read, find what resonates and just keep reading it on repeat. 
This is great advice. You Thank know? you for like a really yeah. doable tactic. And yes. you're hearing you say it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be in this specific order. You, and you can do what feels right. good for you. Do what feels good for you. And so you're yeah. holding the vision and, you know, medita- I, I'm a big meditator, mm-hmm. but I meditate to hold the vision for what I want to accomplish maybe that day. If I have a big thing coming up or maybe that week or month or a big challenge I'm giving myself, there's no wrong or right way to hold the vision. Mm-hmm. But, and then the journal and what you're doing is you're reprogramming your subconscious beliefs so that after a year you, you know, you've read these books on repeat, you know, whatever a page or two a day. Right. Yeah. And you've just, you're getting yourself to believe you're like, you know what? I can, I can do this because yeah, they say I can, I know I other can. people have other people, other people have, have for me and they right. will after us. And so you just one thing. thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, so sorry. But there's one thing I really wanted to point out that you just said that mm-hmm. I don't even know if you said, no, you said, okay. Said, in a year, you will blah, 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 blah. And I want right. to point that out because everybody thinks that this shit should happen like that. Oh, yes. <laughs> like tomorrow. Yes. Like, oh man, right. I, I meditate exactly. today. It's like right. what we're talking about Here with the go. arms, right? Exa- exactly. Exactly. It's just, and I use the physical, the physical example is so good because so many of us have been there. Like, I want to run a mile. Well, you start by running quarter mile. Sure. But you, it that, takes for walking. Time. I mean, the, we, I do believe the power exists for us to like manifest money in a day, a million dollars. I do believe it exists. I think it's exceptionally difficult. You have to be so enlightened and have mm-hmm. just like no gremlins on your back for that to happen. And right. I think it's unrealistic when people say just, Oh, if you want to do this, like quit your day job, do it all within a week, you know, then you're making massive changes, but right. it's terrifying. And then you're terrified. Totally. And all you've accomplished is terrifying yourself and everyone around you. And then you get spiral down to self-doubt and then you really sabotage and then yourself. It's exactly the opposite of what you want to happen. You wind exactly. up sabotaging. Exactly. This is super helpful. This is like really tactical stuff. Yes. yes. So I have a question about a different topic, which is, you know, as business owners or just as human beings, we all have budgeting, right? Like we all have, like, we all have the amount of money that we bring in. So where does like, I have this much money to spend, or I'm going to spend this much money, which is budgeting. Yes. And, and then of course that lack and fear mindset that we're trying to overcome, how do the two coexist? So, okay. So one of the key parts of manifesting money is respecting the money you already have. Oh, like I do not oh. ever ever. I had a client recently who had her computer break. She said, do I buy the, another Mac or do I buy, well, does it feel good? Well, it's such a stress. I'm like, well, then what feels good? You know, does it feel better to invest all, take all the money you earn and invest all in one coach? Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe that feels really good to you. You just know it's absolutely the right move. But what I say is do it, first of all, respect the money you have. If you just do not, if it's a stretch to do something you love or something you want, like you need to set up your accounting system. So you have to invest in say QuickBooks. Totally. Then you know in your heart that this is a good investment because this is going to be a direct investment in your business that's going to help you with money. And that is usually always a solid, I would never see why it wouldn't be a solid investment. And I would say too, don't be afraid to look at the bridge opportunities. So with my client, she bought a computer, not the expensive map book, but a different computer that was less expensive, but well, she's like, I love it. It'll be great for the next two years. Fine. Okay. Do it. If that feels good, if that feels better to you, you're respecting your money by not throwing yourself off a cliff financially and going into debt. You know, you're throw, you're putting money away. It feels better to look at the bank balance in your savings account or whatever. That's fine. But don't be, there, there are two ways. There's being smart and respecting the money you have and diligent about your investments. And then there's being Scrooge. Okay. <laughs> you don't want to be a Scrooge, which is yes. when you're just kind of greedy, hoarding. greedy, hoarding the money. Yes. Money is, a, is an energy exchange. Mm-hmm. When you take the money and judiciously invest in your business, for things that will come back to you and would be a smart investment as an entrepreneur or business owner, you will make that money back and it will come back to you tenfold. I want when, to give an example of this because this oh, yes, happened please. to me. Is that okay. okay? Yeah, yeah. I'd love to hear. So in my, when I was transitioning from my first business to this business, I had run a business before and I now knew what to do and what not to do, but I had never been a solopreneur. I had never done the coaching piece before. Mm -hmm. And I needed to invest in a coach to teach me how to coach as a solopreneur and set up my business and like all those very startup things. Sure. I I wasn't really making very much money and her program was a very intensive program. I knew I was going to get a lot of value for it from Mm -hmm. it. 
but it was $5,000. Wow. And yeah. I was like, oh my God, I don't have $5,000. So they broke it up into three payments. He okay. told me what the first payment would be. I looked at my bank account. I literally had that exact amount in my account. Oh my gosh. Wow. So mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this. And I just kept manifesting the money every single time I had to make the payment. And I wound up tripling what my, what my investment was over the course of three months. I, I more than tripled it. That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. Well, you were, that felt, it was in alignment. It was an aligned action toward money. Yes. So, and by alignment, I'm either fifth dimension soul, fourth dimension thoughts, third dimension body. Oh, I like that. I've never heard that before. Oh yeah. So that's how our body exists in the dimensions. In 3D, you know, so third dimension 3D is our body. That's what we can see, you know, we can feel okay. our Okay. right? So, but it's the slowest to act. Uh, our soul always, you always hear, oh, my soul was calling to me. Yeah, well, your soul's like, I knew. (laughs) People always say that to me. I knew. I just knew. I'm like, why didn't you take any action on it then? Because there are clunky bodies or thoughts (laughs) get in the way. (laughs) The thoughts are positive or negative. You never know where the gremlins are going to pop in your head. And then your bodies have to get going with it. Right? Right. Oh, I love that. That's super helpful. Yeah. So that's how we exist. So with action, that, that was in alignment with your soul. I mean, yeah, you cannot, the signs, like we have the exact amount here. I'm going to split in three payments. That makes it easier for me. That was this very smart investment in your, you know, in your business. There's no question. So that works out great. I'll okay. tell you some crappy investments too. Okay. As a, it doesn't always work that way. Yes. How many times, I bet you have had this ex- exact example as you're in your own business. Like you're on somebody's email list and they're, they have a course and yeah. it's launching and then it's closing and you get the email and you get another email and they're not going to open it again and they're not going to open it again. And you have this one last chance and you you buy the course or the whatever it is out of fear. Yes. And then the course sits on your computer and you never touch it. Yes. Totally I've had guilty. that too. I've had that too. And I had to get myself out of that because what I discovered too, and I tell this to my clients when they're charging coming up with charges for their or prices for Pricing. their services. Yeah. I say when you pay, you pay attention. When you pay like when you pay more, you pay extra attention. So those yeah. cheap courses are great. And I, you know, I often think about them myself because I do think it would be a fun way to reach more people. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I and I've taken courses, but I've now I had to limit I'm a what skill I always ask, what skill do I want to develop? Mm-hmm. And then the course will appear. It's like you say, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Totally true. Because yes. there's so many good courses out there and uh-huh. I really admire what people are doing, but I, you know, it's very difficult. So that might not be when you have a, a business you're starting, how many courses do you really need to take? You know, so and how much time do you have? How much? Yes. Cause they do require time yeah. and then they have communities and they come up and they come down. Can you do it before it comes down? You know, it's a lot. It's a lot to think about. So mm-hmm. if you're in that fifth, dimension you call it fifth dimension yeah, the soul your soul alignment you and you check in with yourself so everything i'm hearing you say today is you actually already know yes you can undo all of the programming that's running in the back of your brain like an app that's open on your phone you can yep. undo all of that uh, it just requires intention and attention yes. to your soul alignment it is. And often that means our thoughts get our thoughts, in the, which is the fourth dimension. That's where it gets muddled up, you know, with like the subconscious, we have to undo those beliefs. And, and then, which often means you have to start facing fears. Like, you know, I have to start running through the fear of being the rich person on the block or looking at the money. Yes. You know, looking, looking, at, at, looking at the money, figuring is really, really getting a strong understanding of the money as it comes in and comes out. Mm-hmm. Um, I need to stop being afraid of my accountant around tax season. Yes. Which is a, a legitimate fear people have. I need I, to stop. I, I understand that completely. Yeah. I need to stop being afraid of telling my parents what I do mm-hmm. or, you know, when, you know, your parents might be, our parents love us dearly, but they're trying to keep us safe. So right. when you're like, Oh, I'm jumping out of my own as an entrepreneur and I'm going to make, you know, six figures this year. They're like, oh, Whoa, lady, are you sure? You know, there's a lot of, who are, are you sure? to do that? Are you sure? <laughs> you know, it's kind of scary. So, I, you know, there's a lot of things. So I always say, get your best girlfriends. Mm-hmm. and go for coffee and just tell them what you're doing. The people that just love you with no judgment at all mm-hmm. and start practicing saying it. Practice. And surround yourself with those higher vibrational people yeah. who are aspirational to you. Exactly. exactly. Yes. When you're within 
people that get it, you can lift each other up without re reservation. Well, uh, Kelsey, I'm so glad to have met you. Thank and you. I feel like you're now in my circle so I can, you know, we, we can now be in each other's circle and totally like now I can have conversations about this with you, with you. Yes, I love I this love conversation. Me too. I love talking about it. Yeah. And I think that my community is going to be so appreciative because I don't, and, and I'm including myself at this because I do a lot of work around money mindset and my clients need to do that work too. And it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of you know, fortitude because yes. it hurts sometimes to look at those yes. old stories and the junk that you have. And I think the worst, like it, I always, always ask my clients, what's the worst thing that could happen? So you look at your bank account and yeah. you don't have as much money in there as you need. Then what? Like you're not going right. to die. Then what? Right. right. And then you have to, I mean, then you really have to take this massive determined aligned action. Excellent. And that's when we energetically communicate to the universe that we are showing up to change our story. We're yes. going to show up and change our money story because now we don't believe the BS we were sold, I which isn't even what we were necessarily, I don't, I don't want to make it sound like it wasn't it was like it was pushed on. Right. It's just, exactly. we lived in. it's just that what we interpreted, you know, it's the way, totally. it's the way you develop a fear of, you know, spiders or something like that. And then you're an adult, you're like, wow, I was so afraid of this. Yeah. And you I know, think like, that's like, a really good point because we don't need to blame anyone no, no. for who we are right now or, or how we think about money, but we can surely take note and move forward. Like that's where the, that's where the magic happens when we, when we take note, stop the blame of ourselves or others and just take focused action. Exactly. exactly. I love that. So tell everybody how they can follow you, work with you, get in touch with you. Sure. So I am on Instagram and Facebook as Rich Mom Coach. Oh, that's a great name. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you. So, and I, I focus on, I say, I focus on teaching creative entrepreneurial women how to ditch what drains you, means ditch those energy and financial drains, mm -hmm. master making money so that it just starts mm -hmm. to flow with ease and that's your money mindset and design lives and businesses you love. Oh. Yeah. So, which is all about, you know, setting up the business to work on your terms, not on how you think it should work and that sort of thing, which is what you do with your clients too. It's, I was just going to say, we're so aligned. I, yeah. I literally do the same thing. You know, it's like how to uh, master your time so that yes. you can then master your mindset and then create strategy that we're, or implement strategy, create an implement strategy for your business. We're doing the same thing, but you're coming at it from like, Hey, I'm going to teach you how to make more money. Okay. And I'm talking about it. Like we're, we're just so aligned. We're doing the right. same thing. I know basically. we are doing so the, interesting. the same thing. And it's, it's these, it's the entrepreneurs I love. They come with these businesses they've got going and they're like, I can't make money. There's no money out there. I'm like, Oh no, no. Money's an infinite resource. Let's get your hands on some. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Thank you so much for all of your time today. Do you yeah. have any program? Is there a way, how do people work with you? Do you do one one on one? I'm doing one on one right now, and mm -hmm. I'm doing one on one through the summer. So, oh, good. I'm starting some coaching, some group coaching programs later this summer. So, Excellent. if you join my group, you get all the information and you get on my mailing list. I know it's funny after talking about those courses. I thought about different courses, but I'm not going to do that to people. Like it's opening, it's closing, it's opening, it's closing. <laughs> so yeah, and I'm, and that's you know the the thing is that's what works to to get people to join something. That's what literally works marketing wise. But that's why my program, I, I have a course in it, but I literally hand hold people yes. to get through it because people need to have their hands held. They need transformation. Exactly. They don't just need information. They need transformation. And that comes from standing next to somebody and working exactly. with them. That's why I like working with a one-on-one. -on -one. I love it. Yes. And I love getting, talking with people and working. And it also informs what a course in the future would be. Yes. Yeah, oh, totally. I'm learning with my, yes, exactly. And then, you know, going into your subconscious and doing those things is a scary exercise. Yes. You know, you need doing somebody it next some, to you. Yes, you do. You need someone next to you. And I know when I did it myself, I was like, found myself in tears. I found myself <laughs> upset. I found myself angry. And then I was all done with this. I was like, what was I so worried about? And then money came out of all different directions. It didn't have to oh be my just for my business, you know? I love Like this. checks here, commissions here, little thing. I was like, oh, well, this was way easier than I thought it was going to be. This is so um, great. I'm so excited for my yes. community to hear this and oh, for my clients glad. to put and to refer them to you and follow you and, and see what you have to teach them. Great. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, awesome. Kelsey. You're welcome. Thanks for joining me today. You can access more free tools and video trainings at www.jenliddy.com slash free sources. That's F-R-E-E sources. If you found this podcast helpful, I'd be so grateful if you subscribed and gave a review. And if you have a friend who'd benefit from today's topic, tool, or strategy, please share the Idea Space podcast with her. That way, together, we can help more women achieve their dreams and take action on their ideas. 
Isn't it time we all were able to get what we want? Join me next week and remember right now, all you need to do to make your idea a reality is take the very next step you know how to. Bye.